I want you to envision something for a second. A future where Joe Biden forces everybody who is in prison to work for the profit of the prison. He bans masks and even sticks at protests where in his dark future in this regard, uh, guns are already banned for open carry purposes at all protests in the country. Um, Biden is also installing a facial recognition super state. He's putting cameras everywhere he can because um, he banned masks and sticks at protests so that he could find protesters who protested his regime. I want you to envision this while also uh, he's making it easier for the state to imprison children. He's relaxing the ability for cops to use guns against people. He's really cozying up to Israel, having tearful exchanges at the Western Wall, and swearing fealty to Zionist uh, statists, uh, while e eagerly and excitedly glad-handing the Pope to his face in public. I want you to uh, imagine that Joe Biden is talking to his dead dogs for political advice, um, and that he also supports the historical regimes of other fascist countries. I want you to imagine that Biden, um, while Hunter is out for, you know, fucking his drug offenses, starts to really drill down waging a war on drugs and hires a noted drug warrior to be in charge of a significant amount of his foreign policy. I want you to imagine that he's finding protesters who have anything to say about this. Um, and I want you to imagine that while he's doing this, he has cut the value of the dollar in half. And that he has hiked a ton of taxes on a bunch of people in an aim to do, quote, deficit reduction. While also uh, having the value of the dollar against foreign currencies, let's say China. And telling investors from foreign countries that they should invest in America uh, by making the, like, contracts for American properties and more payable in yuan. I want you to picture all of this while he is pushing himself as a libertarian and, and an anarcho-capitalist and cozying up to a bunch of libertarian and anarcho-capitalist leaders who see this and then have him on their shows and interview him and post nothing but pro-Biden content and say that Biden is the next coming of Rothbard and that we should respect Biden as an agent of anarchy. All while he uh, does like a complete 180 and cozies up to the Trump regime. All right? I want you to picture that he does all of this while having cops go into the streets and beat the fuck out of any protester who has anything to say about this. I want you to picture this being the new regime under Joe Biden's America, and I want you to picture anybody who posts uh, against him in a libertarian group um, getting silenced. A bunch of libertarians consistently worshipping at his altar and promoting speeches that he gave at the World Economic Forum where he says, um, I'm Joe Biden and all of you are the real protagonists of this story. And America is your staunch and unconditional ally. I want you to picture all of this going down and anybody who criticizes Joe Biden after he does this is called a communist. I want you to picture that and then think about this because 
That's not Joe Biden. But it is happening. And it's happening in Argentina at the behest of the Argentinian leader, Javier Malay, who had in his platform all of this stuff already, basically, and who has in his present actions demonstrated himself not to be a libertarian or an anarcho-capitalist or an anarchist in general, but a fascist. And sure, he might have cut some fucking government programs. He might have cut some fucking government agencies. But you know what he did? All that shit that I just said. Like, even just the devaluing of the currency by half should blow people's minds as an interventionist central planning tactic. Like, I didn't even go as far as talking about Biden having you know, allegedly threatened central banking while forcing the U.S. onto the central bank of some foreign country like China through the gradual adoption of their currency and the gradual phasing out of American dollars. That would make America China's bitch, wouldn't it? Oh, it's almost like using this fucking analogy we can say that if that would make America China's bitch, the government of Argentina doing the same thing but in the form of dollarization makes Argentina America's bitch. Editor Jeremiah here to uh, talk about, like, yeah, you know how I just said that um, Argentina is going to be the bitch of the West? Well, we just found out um, while, you know... I was putting off editing this video that um, Javier Malay, uh, his cabinet met with Janet Yellen of the American Federal Reserve. And um, in that meeting, uh, which which took place like a couple days ago, um, <laughs> the, uh, the February 29th meeting concluded with her saying that she was very confident they would amount to an inflection point for his country. This is from Reuters and uh, that she expected an active and constructive relationship between the U.S. Treasury and Caputo's ministry. Um, additionally, he appears to be doing something that I predicted he would be doing, um, because this is the kind of route with all of these installed Latin American dictators. Uh, he is going to work directly with the IMF. Pinochet worked with the IMF. He's working with the IMF. It's, it's, it's a running theme. When these people try to get people off of a nationalized economy, they will go globalist a lot of the time. And so he's cozying up to all these people. And with all that in mind, he's also planning on uh, holding a summit on how Argentina can support Ukraine. You know all these people with this, like, I don't support the current thing fucking meme as their profile picture or whatever. And it's got, like, all these, you know, the Ukrainian flag, the flag of Israel, the you know, fucking Federal Reserve, whatever, the whatever symbols that they associate with modern, you know, fucking globalist tyranny. Uh, yeah, those people are talking about Javier Malay and his fucking supporters. So, by all means, continue to watch this video to find out more about how Javier Malay is proving me right about Javier Malay. Back to you, fucking slightly less disheveled uh, Jeremiah. So, he's doing all of this... And America loves it because they're getting another vassal state. The IMF loves it because they're getting another globalist. The fucking World Bank loves it because loans, because fucking uh, integration into the global economy, because neoliberalism wins again, because a guy who has endorsed the regime of Augusto Pinochet and all of its Nazi pedo torture, rape, murder trappings... Um, that guy is on their side now. That guy is being one of their stooges. He's being a staunch ally of the World Economic Forum, and so many people in the libertarian world support that shit because they're sold out, because they're cucked to the right, because they hate the left 
more than they love liberty because their slogans um, outpace their rational thinking because they don't actually give a fuck about liberty and they didn't to start with. See, that's the real shit. These people hate communists. They don't love liberty. They hate the left. They don't love liberty. And that's why so many people involving fucking, um, like, libertarian circles, including some alleged agorists and anarcho-capitalists, are sucking him off. While he does everything in an anti-libertarian direction, but he doesn't like leftists. He doesn't like wokes. And that makes all of this other stuff acceptable. It makes all of this other stuff where he is tearfully, gleefully aligning himself with world powers and making Argentina America's bitch. While he's doing all of this, he is still somehow the darling of right libertarians. And let's just say uh, the Mises Caucus, um, if you try to post in the Libertarian Party Mises Caucus Facebook group, Anything that opposes the government of Argentina right now, anything that opposes the state that Javier Malay is running, anything, no matter how reasonable, no matter how factual, no matter how fucking driven, they will decline your post. And the libertarian official fucking Twitter profiles, so many of them are sucking him off. So many of them don't give a shit that he has completely betrayed the principles of liberty. That he does not care about personal fucking self-ownership, property, any of that. He stole half of the fucking value of the peso overnight. And if you look up the reasons that a lot of these protests are happening, the protests that fake fuck libertarians out there are claiming is just commies, communists, socialism. The real reason these protests are happening is because he devalued the currency to force them onto the dollar. And, you know, there, <laughs> one of the things that happened as a result of this is rental prices fucking skyrocketed. Rental prices fucking soared. And then after not too long, uh, the people in charge of these rentals realized, wait, we can't charge double or we'll lose our fucking tenants. So we, we can't charge in the American dollar. And we've got to, in fact, only accept contracts in Argentinian pesos because that's what our people have. That's the currency that they've been saving up. That's the currency that they get paid in at their job. And so if we don't go with the old paradigm, if we don't normalize on those grounds, we lose those people. And there aren't a whole lot of people who are willing to fill the position who have the money already. Because that's the thing. He's doing shock therapy, shock doctrine. You should read Naomi Klein. He's doing the same shit that so many other neoliberal globalists have done, and he's not a libertarian. But so many people are like, ooh, he cut some regulatory agencies. Ooh, he threatened some central bankers. Notice which central bankers he did not threaten. The ones in the U.S. The U.S. will get away with printing a shit ton more currency. The U.S. will get away with doing that, and they'll collect seniorage off of the currency that they're printing. That's the reason the U.S. loves this. Not only seniorage, free seniorage, look that concept up, but also because Argentina will be America's bitch. And he's not threatening Janet Yellen. He's not threatening the American central banks. He's not threatening any bit of the Western establishment. He's not threatening any bit of the state. What he's doing is supporting his version of it. Supporting his particular dogma. Support and, and hey, hey, dogma. Because let me remind you, Joe Biden isn't talking to dead dogs, which everybody would mock him for if he was. 
Javier Malay fucking is. He's talking to his dead dogs for political advice. Dogs that he named after Chicago school economists because he loves the Pinochet regime and he fetishizes neoliberal shock doctrine. This is Javier Malay. Javier Malay is a power mad, insane tyrant who is unleashing the police, who is running on a right wing populist platform of statism and tyranny. Javier Malay is the enemy of the people. Viva la libertad carajo? Yeah, fuck off with that shit. No, you don't mean it. I don't give a shit if he frenetically jacked off on stage with a fucking chainsaw. I don't care if he dressed up as a superhero um, for, for like a cosplay once. I don't care if he fucking spastically hugged Donald Trump. He is not the friend of liberty. In fact, that should be a red flag because Trump is similarly a beacon for a lack of liberty domestically speaking. Are we going to forget warp speed? Are we going to forget Johnson & Johnson executives on his stage as part of his campaign? Are we going to forget assassinating extrajudicially a foreign general? Are we going to forget removing a reporting mandate for drone use so that he can fucking drone as many people as he wants and get away with it? Biden didn't put that back because it's good for tyrants to be able to drone however many people they want without recourse. Are we going to forget about I like taking the guns first and doing due process second? Are we going to forget the bump stock ban? Are we going to forget the fact that the first lockdowns were under Trump? Are we going to forget that part of Warp Speed was declaring a state of war and emergency so he could hyperfund the Pentagon? Are we going to forget the fact that Donald Trump is a tyrant as well? And anybody who cozies up to him is a tyrant as well. Are, I guess we are. I guess we're going to forget that. I guess we're going to forget anything that might be even remarkably inconvenient to the agenda saying that Javier Malay is a fucking libertarian, anarchist, ANCAP, whatever. Because if it's inconvenient to that, a bunch of people might have to eat crow. A bunch of people might have to admit the left was right about him. A bunch of people might have to ditch that part of the culture war that says, knee jerk, fucking defend the right, knee jerk, oppose the left. A bunch of people might have to realize that they've got allies in the left and that these people on the left might have an, a point occasionally. That maybe somebody branding themselves against the left does not make them an awesome fucking person by default. Maybe the shit leftists are just as bad as the shit rightists. Maybe all of this stuff that he has been pushing is a direct result of the kinds of tyrannical statist authoritarianism that have exceeded in the past while people get on libertarian podcasts to excuse the atrocities. Austin Peterson sells a shirt saying Pinochet was right and he is called a libertarian. Why? Anybody who supports what happened in Chile is not a libertarian, is not an anarchist, is a fascist. They are fucking evil, those who worked for Pinochet. Pinochet was evil. And if you want to talk about elected officials and justify everything Javier Malay is doing by saying they elected him into office, pretending for a moment that politics works and he's not just a plant, um, then you should also respect that Allende was democratically elected and the military coup that took him out was the first step in a tyranny that only became recoverable after he was out because he started to open up to the possibility that maybe he should be out and said, well, okay, we'll have an election. And people elected Pinochet out. But I guess only one type of election matters. Only the type of election that fights the left. Despite Javier Malay doing the kinds of things that in the beginning of this fucking episode 
should be very clear would get him called a communist if he did them to Americans as Joe Biden. This is evil. He is not a good person. He is not even a stable person. He is not even a sane individual because he would rather talk to his dogs that are dead than a communist. This is the real paradigm. He would rather get economic advice from dead dogs than the people. He would rather push people into fucking police state facial recognition, prison for profit, fucking drug controlled, gun controlled tyranny than he would listen to the common person, listen to their struggle, go slowly into a better society so that he doesn't fuck people over and steal half their fucking money. Move quietly and quickly um, into a more libertarian paradigm where the common person is not the vassal of the American government through dollarization. Right prior to, let me remind you, the instatement and installation of CBDC. He is pushing them onto the world's biggest central bank while forcing them off of their current currency and people say that he's anti-Fed. Imagine if Ron Paul got in office and his first step was to end the U.S. central bank and then push us onto the Chinese banking system. Onto the banking system of a foreign government who owns debt for the U.S. Imagine how that would fucking play in libertarian circles. They would hate it if it happened to them, but since it's not happening to them, they don't give a fuck. And that's reality. These people are fundamentally self-centered, fundamentally self-interested, fundamentally selfish, evil motherfuckers. And that's the reason that they will force you onto a right-wing paradigm rather than ever listening to the left. Javier Malay is a Trump-worshipping, Pope-worshipping Zionist who says that, like, the World Economic Forum has a staunch ally in Argentina, and those people are the real protagonists of the story. Being John Galt, but more cucked. He is a drug warrior piece of shit who hired a fascist in Patricia Bullrich to wage a war on drugs. He is banning facial coverings at protests so that he can scan protesters' faces with facial recognition technology that he wants to blanket the country in so that he can find protesters and anybody who steps out of line, directly stealing money from you if you speak out against him. That's Javier Malay. Javier Malay is forcing his country onto a prison for profit, profit pipeline he is forcing people onto a higher level of taxation. He is forcing half of people's savings away from them. And while open carry of guns is already prohibited in Argentina, he is now taking the last step and banning fucking sticks at protests. You cannot carry a stick to a protest where cops that he is relaxing gun use for can shoot you. You can't even hold a stick while they are allowed to wield a gun. That is Javier Malay. Javier Malay is a fascist. He is a fascist much more akin to Augusto Pinochet than any real anarchist. But his supporters are rabid and they're dogmatic. And they would rather support this weaselly fucking used car salesman of a fascist than they would actually be real about what anarchy is going to take, about it, what it's going to require. Oh, things are turning around. Maybe. But I know things are turning into a worse environment in a lot of ways. And I'm not going to ignore those ways just because you like the fact that he's beating the fuck out of leftists. Because you're a tyrant as well. Because you're a person who likes fucking brutality and statism and authoritarian rhetoric and authoritarian action as long as you're the ones in authority positions. 
This is the reality with so many of these libertarians. Like, they said, oh, it's just a joke when they're posting their helicopter memes. But it's not. It never was. It was never a joke. You know what it was? It was pretext. It was these people stating very clearly the grounds on which they stood. And saying, we support whatever regime happens to brutalize our political enemies. And we will stand on those grounds. And we will ignore, block, tarnish, smear, libel anyone who has anything negative to say about our chosen dictators. Because that's what these people have wanted. That's the reason they were willing to excuse what happened under the regime of Pinochet. That's the reason these people are so on board with, you know, fucking Holocaust denialism and a bunch of other shit that they could push out there because they like dictatorial regimes as long as those dictatorial regimes destroy their political enemies. They're the same kinds of motherfuckers who are currently anti-trans, anti-woke, etc. And saying, oh yeah, it's okay that they burned the books from Hirschfeld's fucking uh, like library. Because we don't like those people. What was in those books? Research! Facts! Science! Things that you must oppress and suppress in order to maintain and gain power. So you do. That's the truth. That's the reality. And that's why I have opposed these people for a significant period of time. And I will be making a fuller video on this. And you can look into this. All of the claims that I'm making here are completely true. There will be a full... By the end of uh, March, a full video against Javier Malay on Hate with Harding. Which I'm also going to fire up by putting out one video there a month. So I figured that the leap day in February would be a nice chance for me to catch up with y'all. And just tell you that if you like Javier Malay, you are one of the reasons why we need to smash the fucking state.